We are a long way from anywhere. Located about 80 kilometres up the Fraser Island coast is this remote post of Orchid Beach, a welcome site for people looking for fuel, bait and ice cream, or just someone to talk to. So I'm really not a fan of crowds, but at the same time I can get sick of my own company pretty quickly as well. That's why I love a place like this. Remote living requires a certain skill set, and you'd need plenty of that living in Orchid Beach. Donnie Mackay runs the shop here. He's been here for yonks and he says it's an interesting place to live. How many people living in Orchid Beach these days? Probably roughly 30. Yeah. They were about. Yeah. And you have to be a sort of a, sort of fairly self-reliant, don't you? Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. got to think ahead if you're going to live in a place like oh, this. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mate. No, but everyone's... Yeah, some are working, some are retired. Yeah. But, you know, they have to go probably every two weeks, go back to town, and get supplies, go to the bank. I think it's it's all about lifestyle now, isn't it? You know, yeah. like, even on the mainland, every second vehicle you see like in Gympie, and that's a four-wheel drive. You know, is there anybody in Orchid Beach that doesn't fish? <laughs> yeah, <and> me. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. too busy. Yeah, yeah, I'm working mainly. Yeah. What's the worst thing about living in Orchid Beach? You might get a flat beer or a dodgy oyster occasionally. No, you won't get a flat beer. <laughs> oh, it's a real outpost, isn't it? Yeah. Because you can get fuel here, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get bait here, you can get ice, mm. all of those essentials yeah. that you'll need if you're heading up to the Cape. Oh. I, most people would stop in here on the way yeah, through the Cape. Do, yeah. Well, I do get people that camp at the Cape, they'll come down every couple of days for ice and they can fill their water container up there. Down here. What's the uh, most popular uh, ice cream, ice block sold here? Oh, well, it depends. If, 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 if you're a dad and mum, will lay up the magnums and the kids will get the paddle pops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've brought my old, man. my old man's with me, so uh, it looks like I'll be getting the paddle pop. He'll have a paddle pop <laughs> and he'll, he'll get the man with me. <laughs> with Malu Bay stretching out in front of us towards the Coral Sea, it's easy to see why people come here to rent holiday houses. The one point I'd make about places like Orchid Beach and the Gutter Bar on Morton and the shop at Bulwa is that you'll often hear people saying, oh no, buy all your stuff at home, you know, the fuel's cheaper, the supplies are cheaper. Well, what you've got to consider is that if you don't spend a bit of money in places like this, one day you'll come back and they're not here. And it's outposts like Orchid Beach that need to be supported if you want facilities in places like this to go on for the next 10 or 20 years. It's just a, a simple matter of supply and demand, isn't it? If people like Don aren't making a dollar, then uh, they're not gonna be here for much longer. And next time you come here, you won't be able to get fuel or ice or bait or all the things that you need. So spend your money here. There's an airstrip if you're rich enough to own your own plane, Plenty of people launch trailer boats off the beach here and the reward is spectacular fishing. So from here we're heading to Sandy Cape North, we've got to go via Nagala Rocks. That in itself could feature in the next episode, that'll be a story on its own. See you soon. ARB are the people to see to get your 4 to Orchid Beach and beyond. They're all over the country. 